It was one of the most explosive cases ever involving a polygamous group, the atrocities of the Zion Society. At the centre was the sect's leader, Arvind Shreve, who, along with 11 others, was found guilty of multiple serious offences against children. Now, 30 years on, the young crime investigator who led the secret three-year takedown mission is telling all in a brand new podcast. And I am pleased to say Mike King joins us now from Utah. Mike, thank you for uh, joining us today. Gee, Hello, this Mike. is an incredible story. Take us back to that day when you first learnt of the case. Well, it's great to be with you. You know, I was working as a property crimes investigator, buy, buying stolen vehicles and selling them. And uh, we were in the middle of this sting operation, and I walked into the office one day, and and uh, the secretary asked me to speak to a woman who was seated at the at the table there. And I approached her, and she stood and very confidently said, "I've been." involved in a cult that's sexually abusing children. Do you have a moment to talk to me? And, mm. and of course, I tried to act normal, but, but that was not a normal day. You did an incredible job, Mike, over a three-year period, a, a, a large operation to take down the group. Was there ever a time that you thought the case may collapse? Oh, I think, um, especially that first 30 days, we felt like we had such a short fuse knowing that children were being sexually assaulted. Mm. And, uh, and so we had to move quickly, and yet we had to move so, uh, so microscopically and so specifically that we didn't share anything that someone might get a heads up. And, uh, and so, yes, every day I worried that we were uh, going too slowly, and, and then I was worried that we were going to lose the traction that we needed. But thankfully, everything came together. Yeah. It was such a huge responsibility for you and the guys you were working with. Many of the women caught in the cult credit you with saving their lives. How does that make you feel? You know, it's really humbling. I, I purposely stayed away from the children, hoping that I would never serve as some kind of a reminder of what happened. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Dr. Phil brought the victims together 30 years later and, and surprised me by having me come into the studio and chat that I met them for the first time face to face. It was incredibly emotional, but but it's been pretty rewarding because we've been able to to share a lot of time together since then. Yeah, congratulations on your work over the years. You've of course gone on to become one of the world's leading criminal investigators. What other cases that stand stand out for you, Mike? You know, it's interesting. I've had the privilege of interviewing some pretty horrific serial killers during my career. The, the Richard Ramirez's, the, the Robert Ben Rhodes, who are just terrible serial predators that we talk about in Mapping Evil. And we, we explore how they use geography to their benefit and how we in law enforcement didn't leverage geography like we could have. But, you know, one of those cases that really stick out is a little seven-week-old baby named Ian Wing who was murdered and three police investigations couldn't come up with a suspect through some profiling and some analysis. We were able to focus on an individual and eventually get a confession out of him for murdering this child. And, and those are the kinds of things that you just never forget. Yeah, I'm sure. It's such confronting work. How do you not take that home or do you? <laughs> you know, when I was a young officer, I did take it home. And thankfully, I had a faith system and counsel from clergy that helped me kind of put things in balance and recognize that while I can certainly advocate for the victim and the downtrodden, I can't carry their burdens. All I can do is be a voice for them. Oh and when I finally realized that I just didn't have to feel all their emotion, but I could still represent them, it became much easier to separate them. So when I went to work, I was a cop. When I went home, I tried to never think police work. Yeah, they're ghastly crimes, but we are fascinated by them. Tell us about the new podcast. Mapping Evil has been incredible. I've been able to team with Tori Shepard, an Australian journalist who has been just so fantastic. I love her quirky way of approaching things and challenging me on thought. We've been able to take serial crimes and incredible crimes that have happened in Australia. We've looked at companion cases in the United States that I had worked. And uh, we've looked at the similarities. And while we may be a half a world away from each other, we realized that predatory behavior is very consistent. And there is so much that we can learn that we can reduce our own levels and risks of being victimized. And so that's what we tried to do in Mapping Evil is explore these cases, but empower the public that we don't need to be in fear. We just need to think a little more and be a little more proactive in what we do to keep ourselves safe.
I'm sure many of our viewers are looking for it right now. Mike, thanks for the chat. Mike King's podcast, Mapping Evil, is available now.